It's February. Traditionally a pretty lean time in the harvest calendar. But here in Norfolk, there is one very sweet treat on the menu. It might not look it, but hiding inside this beast is a beautiful secret. One of my greatest weaknesses, sugar. As a nation, we eat two million tons of these white crystals every year. That's half a kilo per person per week. Historically, we imported it all from cane plantations in the tropics until 1747, when we discovered we could extract it from root crop grown here in the UK, sugar beet. Nowadays, we grow half of all the sugar we consume, which explains the scale of this massive harvest. Today, I've come to Holcomb Estate to find out just what it takes to feed our sweet tooth. You are going to let me drive that? Today, Greg, this is yours. No way, mate, this is enormous. James Beamish is part of an army of East Anglian farmers marching to bring in the sugar beet before spring arrives. I'm very nervous. <laughs> so am I. I <laughs> I'm very, very... How much damage can I do on this? Ah, uh, no, we'll be safe. We're in a big field. We'll be safe. Right, we're ready, aren't we? We're ready. Way. There it goes. No, no. <laughs> it's going nuts. Now, if you let go of the steering wheel, yeah. you move that joystick this way. We should be steering. Just let that take a few metres to find itself. And then off Mate, we go. Mate, this thing is moving itself. And you've got sugar beet coming in the tank behind. Yes! So how much sugar beet are we hoping to lift today? So today we would like to do 12 to 14 hectares, which would be a 1,000 tonne of sugar beet. Wow! Mate, I'm going to steer this manually. OK. All right, because okay. I've got more confidence in it. It's wobbling all over the place. Hang on. Yeah, I'm worried about filling up the back. What happens if we fill it up? It will overflow. It will beep and tell you that it's full. We've probably got a trailer full in, so I don't know if you want to try and call Ollie up and get him to come and unload. Uh, Greg in the big machine calling Ollie in the smaller support vehicle. So are we going to stop and unload? Or... No, it's, well, I think you've, you've gained enough experience now, Greg, that we're going to try and unload on the move. Can we do this? Is this how you do it? This is how I do it. He's here, he's here, he's here. Go on, boy. Now you press your top right button, top right. After a morning harvesting, it's time to meet the boss to see what he thinks of my efforts. <laughs> Hello, Paul. Paul Hoverson is the director of farming here at Holcomb. Well from, done. From a professional eye, how did I do? A little bit more training, one or two. We've left a little bit behind. Did I cut that in half? You cut that in half. Your eyesight, your steering might have been slightly out. That, though, is an odd-looking beast, mate, isn't it? Do you want to try and taste it? I would love to have a taste, yeah. <laughs> wow. Surprisingly sweet. Wow. That has got the crunch of a radish, and that is sweeter than the sweetest pear I've ever tasted. Sugar in its most natural form. Like a lot of arable crops, sugar beet is sown in the spring. All summer, the plants grow strong, converting sunlight into sugar, which they store in their roots to survive the winter. Left alone, they would use that energy to grow again in the spring. Except we don't give them the chance. Forty miles south of Holcomb is the largest sugar beet processing factory in Europe ideally situated next to some of the best beet-growing land. Every day during the harvest, 800 lorries visit the British Sugar Factory at Whissington, each one carrying about 25 tonnes of beet. Hey, 
How are you Hello, doing? Hello, Greg. Welcome to Whittington. I've got a load of stunningly good sugar beet for you. That good? Dan Downs is the man responsible for buying all the sugar beet to feed this enormous factory. This is a lorry wash-off, Greg. And How this, does this work? And this is where the lorries are unloaded using high-pressure water, washes the beet directly into the factory. That, that looks like a lot of fun. Use this joystick here um, and move it from left to right. You've seen it water everywhere. And this is why you're behind a window, otherwise you'd be getting now really wet. Sugar beet is a vegetable, so you've got to treat it really gently. And this is a nice, gentle way of moving the beet round into the factory. And it starts the cleaning process off as well, washing the soil off the beet. Well, I'll tell you, you'd look forward to coming to work, wouldn't you? I mean, this is great, yeah. isn't it? Best place to work in the factory, this is. Once the beet enters the factory system, it's washed to remove any mud and stones from the fields. Metal arms remove any stringy bits. They're like combs. Yeah, well, that's not much use to me and you, is it, Greg? <laughs> then the beet gets chopped into chips before it goes into giant drums where it's mixed with water. The sugar juice is heated and centrifuged to release the crystals we all know and love. How's harvest been? Been a very good year this year. Yields we don't completely know yet, but it's going to be a good year for us as a processor and also for the farmers. They're going to get a good income from the sugar beet crop this year. Sweet. Sweet. <laughs> How many have you got there? Five. Right, there's six big ones. All right. There yeah, you that's are. That's a heavy mine. And a little half, six and a half. Six and a half. That's how many sugar beets it takes to make one kilo bag of sugar. This many? Well, I actually think that's really good. And we've grown quite a lot of these this year. Which is good. So, farmer James Manning, our harvest reporter, with the stats on the sugar beet harvest. What's the latest? Well, do you know what? We knew it was going to be a good year. It's actually turned out to be a bumper year. So last year, they yielded 70 tonnes per hectare, which is good on a, on a normal year. This year, 80 tonnes. I mean, a massive increase. Is there a market for it, though? I mean, with that sort of increase? Well, this is the big problem, is that they're saying now they've got a sugar mountain in the UK. So, you know, big barns full of sugar that they can't sell. So it's interesting, isn't it? We spend a lot of time focusing on, is it a good harvest? And we've got a bumper crop of sweet corn here. But it's also important what's happening just after that harvest. It's no good for a farmer like you to be producing lots if you can't get rid exactly. of it. Exactly. And, you know, we're a dairy farm, so we're producing milk every single day, 365 days of the year. So, we, you know, we've got to sell it. We can't just store it in a big vat for 12 months and wait till the price is right. It's got to go. No, your issue is completely the opposite to the sugar producers. Exactly, exactly. You know, while we're chatting here, I'm sorry, but the harvest is going on behind me. You can hear the buzz, can't you? It looks wonderful, and I'm just itching to get somewhere near it. <laughs>